gonna talk about substrate preparation, efficiencies, and what I'm working with, and where we're headed. That's coming up next. All right, guys, so this video is on our substrate preparation. We've been working with wood chips for the last four years now, and we come up with a good way to kind of process everything so that it's pretty efficient for us, but still is a lot of work. There's a lot of leaf that comes with this, especially this time of year, so we need to leaf blow all that leaf out. That can take anywhere between one and three weeks. It really depends on the season, if we're getting a lot of rain, or if there's a lot of sunshine that's gonna help the drying process. And until we have the right product, it's really important for us to keep this laid out on the tarp where it gets a, a lot of sun exposure, and if it does get wet, it's not gonna start composting. So you wanna keep it flat so that we're able to process this. Now we can use this with a little bit of leaf in it, but we can't use this with a lot of leaf because it's really gonna affect our water, our water moisture content in our bags. It's gonna make it a little bit slimy and you really need this to be dried out before you can start using it. But if it comes uh, at the right time of year where there isn't a lot of leaf chipped up, we can use this stuff right away. Again, we're gonna leave it laid flat out until it dries so that we're able to store it for long term, but we can use it as needed right away, just like this. Now where we're headed, I, I believe, is uh, using hardwood fuel pellets. And this is something that I've been working on for about three weeks now. We're playing around with different, different supplementation. Uh, right now we're working with soy hull pellets. And that seems to be working a lot better than our bran. More, uh, really the reason for that is, is that we, it's a little bit more efficient with the soy hull pellets. So right now, I'll just uh, show you guys what we're using. So right now we're using this brand called Canwick. This is a very clean process. It doesn't have any chemicals in it. And we're also using uh, the, this bag of soy hull. So we have uh, high pro feeds, premium grains, and these are pelletized soy hulls, which is usually used for feed, and we're using that for a nutrient supplement for our bags, and that's called the master's mix. When you go 50% uh, soy hulls, 50% hardwood fuel pellets. And this process really appeals to me because all we're doing is we're measuring out uh, 1.5 two five pounds of hardwood fuel pellets, one pound of soy hulls, and then we're adding three pounds of water, letting that hydrate, and then we're just folding it, putting it right in our sterilization units. We're not even hand mixing. Uh, so there's really no need for mechanization. You just need a few guys uh, to scoop, and it's actually really efficient. We're gonna be doing that tomorrow, so I'll try to get some footage of the day of how that's gonna work out. But so far I've been really happy we're just starting to put those bags in the greenhouse now, but I don't have any harvest data to show you yet, but it does take a considerable amount of labor off the processing to, to get this into, in, into production, into our sterilization, and then into the lab. And this is something that we're really focusing on this year. We're trying to cut out steps so that this business can be more profitable, so that we can work less but make more money. And hardwood fuel pellets, is probably the solution. The only thing I'd have to say is that with the pellets and even with the uh, the soy hull and the hardwood mix, they they're they're so small so that when we mix it up into in in the when we mix the bags up in the lab once they're hydrated, the particle sizes are so small that it takes probably an extra ten days or so to colonize because it's so dense compared to our wood chips, which has a lot of air spaces because we have a lot bigger particle sizes mixed in with a lot a little bit of small particles of the brand. So I really like the mix with our hardwood uh, wood chips and brand, but I really like the process with the hardwood fuel pellets. We can fit more of these bags into our sterilization. I can add more nutrition to the bags and even the cost savings alone is, is very appealing to me. But I suspect where we're headed is we're gonna start adding wood chips 
into the mix with these hardwood fuel pellets somehow so that we get a little bit nicer uh, particle size mix so that the mycelium can run through the bags a lot faster and hopefully get colonized bags in about three weeks and if we're lucky with certain strains possibly two weeks but four weeks is a long time to colonize and that is something that I'm gonna be working to cut down but more importantly right now I'm interested to get the harvest data coming in to see how much more money the masters mix is gonna make us and how much more efficient this process is going to be for the business. So that's what we're working on right now, guys. I have two more students uh, working on the farm this week. I have I have Kevin, he's from Vermont, and I have Shay from Kingston, Ontario. And we've been talking about uh, hemp using hemp shives, which is also known as hemp herds, which is the core of the hemp stock. And he has access to the byproduct, which is the hemp herds in his area. And he, he asked me the question, can you grow on this? Because he has access to a lot of it. And I pose, I pose this question to a couple commercial growers that are on this network on Facebook that I talk to all the time and the data is still coming in but it's a really interesting question to me because you know growing mushrooms on a byproduct or on a waste product in your area is really what this business is all about I recycle wood in my area because that is what I have access to and Kevin wants to know if he can grow on hemp herds and I'm, I'm really curious about this as well because the cannabis industry is only getting bigger and this is a waste stream that no one has really tapped into so it's very interesting. The core of the hemp stock is really woody so very likely we can uh, take out the wood and use hemp herds with a little bit of brand supplementation, probably sterilize it just like we're doing here with our wood-based substrates and you're probably going to be able to grow most wood-based species if not if anything you're going to probably be able to grow most oyster species so kevin and i we were talking about this uh today and yesterday and this is really the topic of discussion on our farm right now and i'm really curious because always trying to figure out new ways to grow mushrooms is something that i'm always interested in and it's something that i like to continue research in as time develops so if you guys want to have more of a discussion like this you know come work on my farm and check out our 2018 mentorship because we take students all the time and the dis and the discussions here get interesting all the time anyways i'll talk to you guys soon Thank you.